We inch another day closer to the NHL playoffs, and Seal and I have everything that you need to know from around the world of fantasy hockey broken down on Friday's episode. Thank you for joining us. Let's get this money, everybody. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back inside the lab. That is the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, Friday edition. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. You are joined by your co-host, Mr. Steel Roden, and your boy, Big Flip Livingstone. Thank you for holding us down all season long. I keyed it up off the top. The playoffs. Steel, we can't wait. You're tweeting about it. I'm foaming at the mouth. These playoffs are set to be one of the best that I think we've seen in a long time. We've alluded to that over the last couple of weeks. And before we get there, we got some big injury news out of the reigning champs, the Colorado Avalanche. We're going to talk about those implications. And Steele and I, I think you and I, we've talked a lot about some of these sneaky good seasons, some of the more impressive performances fantasy-wise. You also need to know some of those more disappointing ones because maybe that's going to affect their draft stock next year, Steele, or maybe... Potentially more importantly, you can pounce on these guys while they're having a little bit of an off season. Next mm-hmm. year could be back to beast mode. So we're going to talk some about the biggest disappointments fantasy wise. But let me throw it over to you for Kale McCarr out probably the rest of the quote unquote season. We don't know about playoffs. What do you think about what's unfolding with the Colorado Avalanche who just seem to not get healthy or lucky at all with this injury news? Yeah, it's been happening all season long. Again, one of those teams that has struggled with injuries all year long, but have somehow come out uh, on the other side in an in okay position right now. Obviously, at the top of the Central Division, you know, you look at some of the other teams that have dealt with injuries all season long, Nashville being one of the most recent ones, Columbus being one of them as well, a couple of those other teams in the Eastern Conference. But Colorado has been in that same category of struggling with injuries to key players uh, like Kale McCarr, like Nathan McKinnon, like Gabriel Landeskog, who hasn't even touched the ice all regular season. Mm. Uh, but they've still found a way to dig deep, rely on other guys like Alexander Gorgiev, the new goaltender in the blue paint for them. Um, you, you know, losing Nazem Kadri was very tough as well to the Calgary Flames in the offseason. And JT Comfer stepped in and filled in that role. So they've depended mm. and, and gotten a lot of help from those depth players that have been with the team for long and new players as well. So they've gotten out on the other side. It, again, this is the a very tough injury news to come out at this time in the season. So hopefully he's not too banged up and he's able to go for the postseason. But even then, they're still one of the top competitors in the league. And If they Mm -hmm. have to go without Kale McCarr, hopefully they don't. But if they do, uh, I don't think it's going to be any any issue whatsoever because you've still got two absolute juggernauts in Nathan McKinnon and Miko Ranton, Valeria Nachushkin, Mm. Terry Lekkinen. The the list goes on, and you've said it yourself at how great Gorgiev has played. They can rely on him in the playoffs. Yes. Gorgiev has been, you know, if we're just going to, before we get on to what I think this McCarr news is going to mean, Gorgiev and guys like even lately Bowen Byram and yes. all year long Miko Rantanen really carrying the team. Mm-hmm. I think Rantanen and Gorgiev, this isn't exactly a bold take steal. But I just love so much about this Colorado Avalanche team. And that's why, aside from Kale McCarr being obviously one of the most important fantasy pieces that there is, and this yeah. means nothing to me for next season, because a guy who actually has been pretty banged up this year only playing 60 games, still getting 66 points, and hold the phone for a minute. This man's a D-man, and he has six game-winning goals. Mm -hmm. I think that's all you need to hear in terms of how important he is to this Colorado Avalanche team and most fantasy GMs. So, number one, if you are in one of those stretch runs and you're very close to taking the title and you have Kale McCarr, I I feel bad for you. You're going to have to get lucky here. We got one more waiver wire Monday coming up. We'll get to some maybe potential replacements. Stay tuned for Monday's episode. But Kale McCarr going down steel, it's huge. Mm -hmm. If he can come back, nothing to the Avs. Because like you said, they're going to be there. 
That division, though, and this is where I want to just leave this conversation. 98 points, 98 points, and 98 points are the Minnesota Wild, Dallas Stars, and Colorado Avalanche. Colorado Avalanche, one game in hand. I think this is the division, though, Steele, that might honestly decide what happens in the Western Conference. And as much as the Vegas Golden Knights and the Edmonton Oilers and even the LA Kings have their aspirations, to me, I just feel the champion, aside from Colorado, of the Western Conference, it's coming out of that central division this year. Minnesota, Dallas, Colorado. I know that's just a gut feeling, but I needed to leave it at that because if Kale McCarr comes back and does what he does, like you said, they're not even going to miss it down the stretch here. And what matters is that he's back for the playoffs. What matters that we need to talk about next is if you're okay to get to these disappointments, Sometimes, yes, sometimes, and I think if you don't mind, I'm going to kick it off with my fifth. <laughs> this is a top five, and I don't think you're going to like this, but let me explain why. Austin Matthews is at my fifth spot for disappointing seasons. And just let me go off a little bit here because yeah, I understand. Yeah. No, 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 because I understand that the man has 38 goals and 80 points. But when you score 60, and 106 in the fashion that he did last year, and I mean 44 goals at even strength steal, and really one of those special years, the Hart, the Pearson, the Richard. The bar goes up, right? That's where disappointments come to me is where did you expect him to be? And yeah, it's still good. But when I look at Matthews, and I know he's battled injuries, and I'm not saying this is a bad season. Let's get real. It's a good season. But it's still disappointing to me because I think this guy's the best shooter in the world. And I mm -hmm. know Connor McDavid's doing what he does. But if we're talking about pure shooting, when they're on their games, Matthews is still my guy. But it's a disappointing year. And at number five, that's where I have Austin Matthews just because of how high the bar was after last year. Yeah, I'm going to have to disagree with this take on Austin Matthews. I don't even think it's been a down year or a disappointing season whatsoever. Yeah, you look at the goals, obviously You'd coming off You'd be in the minority, 60... by the way. I don't think so, because obviously coming off Other of than Jeff goals... O'Neill? Come on, Steele. It's disappointing. <laughs> 38 goals after, for a guy who has a 65 after, caliber. We said he might do 70, my guy. Run that tape back. We thought he could do after, 70. After coming off a 60 goal year, I see how it can be to be disappointing. But we know that Matthew's bread and butter for getting high scoring, or high scoring chance, or getting high uh, or getting goals in in a season is he gets multi goal games at an unrated pace that we've seen before. But this year, mm -hmm. he's only had five or six multi goal games, which has really hurt him as mm -hmm. well. But I don't think it's been a disappointing season because he's okay. really perfected the rest of his game. He's become a better passer. He's become a better defensive forward as well. Over the he's last not, month. Oh, not, not over the last month. The entire Steals, year he's the, become the more physical. Half, he's done so half. much more. He's done so much more for his all-around mm. game this year than what we've seen in the past. It's not just the goal scoring. It's not just the offensive ability. He's able to make plays in the defensive zone, uh, whether it's back checking or just getting the puck and making a good pass. He's plus 30 on the season. He takes less penalty True. minutes this year as True. well. He's able to pick pick uh, the right places because uh, you know you know how bad it is in the NHL. He has more penalty minutes this year. Slashing by the way, all the just saying he's got more penalty minutes this, this year than he did last. Okay, year. he has two more penalty minutes. Uh, and hey, it might be finished. Hey, hey, if you're coming with hate against away. my argument, pal, he's two I'm gonna poke balls, balls away from forty on the season. <laughs> so it's not like it's. A, it's not a down year. It's not a disappointing year. But yeah, it's when you're a bad when year, you're, it's a disappointing. When you're looking year. at 106 points to 80 points, and the season's not over yet, there's still three or four games left for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So we'll see what he's able to do. I don't think it's disappointing. That's just me. But well, let's get to my number five guy before Please. we get uh, moving forward with this top five list and getting to our sponsors. At number five, I have Nazem Kadri. And at first, I was actually a little bit hesitant to put him on here. Because when you actually look at what Kadri has done uh, this year, 20 goal score, 54 points in almost a complete season, uh, and then what he's shown us throughout his entire career career as well, this is just a typical average Nazem Kadri year. Averaging 50 to 60 points, a high amount of shots, hits, penalty minutes, penalty minutes 
a physical guy every single year, uh, year in and year out. But when you look back and think to last year and what he accomplished, 87 points in 71 games, a career high, a plus 13, a career high, wins the Stanley Cup. With that experience and with that contract that he just signed with the Calgary Flames comes big expectations. expectations. And honestly, to me, he just didn't live up to them because, again, overall, it's a typical Nazem Kadri year. But coming mm -hmm. off of a Stanley Cup championship, scoring 87 points in 71 games, what he did in the playoffs for the Avalanche as well, to me, that's a disappointing year. Uh, and he deserves to be more on this list than Austin Matthews, I'll tell you that. See, that's what doesn't make any sense in your argument, though, because the man had 28 goals last year and he already has 23. So he's only five goals off. How is that a disappointment when my man's 25 goals off and he's the biggest star in the league? That's what you're talking about when it's a disappointment, because like you just said, he just played on the Stanley Cup champion winning team. So stats are inflated. Numbers are inflated. And really. He's still going to get at least 23 goals, only five short of last year. That sounds about on point for what you expect from a guy. When my man, disappointment, 25 goals short steal. And I'm not saying bad season. I think that's where we need to separate this chat and move on. Because Matthews has been so effective. And that's the difference maybe where I might agree with you. Because Nazem has not. Matthews has been. So that's just, again, a subjective list. I had to throw them on here because I knew this is where we were going to go, baby. And look at where we're at. Almost 13 minutes. I hope the listeners have liked this one. Let's get to the rest of this list. No bets, though. Happy Easter to everybody celebrating. We got nothing on the bet docket, but we might have a few more arguments <laughs> coming up, Steel. And I like this, though, because this is good fantasy hockey content. And realistically, Nazem Kadri also a disappointment. Yeah, no, they, they, Nazem Kadri had, I still don't agree with the Austin Matthews take because he's still one of the best fantasy players this season. And it's so hard to score in the NHL. He like, could, but he still, this is what I'm saying. He could be, but he can still be a disappointment. Uh, I you know, they, I, they're not, they're not mutually exclusive here. He can still be good and be a disappointment. Like when you know, you, that doesn't make 60, any, you cannot be good. And why not? Because that doesn't Why make not? any that doesn't make any sense. When you're, when, did you hand. not remember what I said though? When the bar is that high, of course you can. Seventy goals is what we expected. Did you not expect potentially seventy goals? Stop right there. You and I both said seventy goals is realistic this year for Matthews, and he doesn't even touch forty. That's a thirty goal discrepancy steal. That's called disappointing, and that's all I have to say. All right. That's it right there, man. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Let's get to our sponsorship with Indeed, and then we'll get on the track of the rest of this Indeed. top five disappointing list. You know we're going to sponsorship steal. That's my bad, and today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team and you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your squad, you're building the talent roster that you need, and you need Indeed. Indeed is hiring on all platforms that help you attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple other job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when all you need is Indeed. Find top talent with Indeed's powerful hiring tools like Match, assessments and virtual interviews and if you hate waiting indeed's us data shows over 80 percent of indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on indeed matches their job descriptions the moment they sponsor a job and candidates invite you to apply through instant match are three times more likely to apply for your job than candidates who only see it in search according to us indeed data and with Indeed matching, as soon as your sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Boom. It's hiring at warp speed. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make your every dollar count. And that's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. In We've been talking to you this one minute. 16 hires have been made on Indeed to our data worldwide. And when you sponsor on Indeed, you know that you are three times as likely to get a hire. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application. Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. 
And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. So make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all the love, all the support you show us every single day. Let's get back on this top five disappointing fantasy hockey seasons uh, in the NHL right now. Getting off a hot debate. With oh, Austin wow. Matthews at number five. Absolutely crazy, in my opinion. You guys be the judge <laughs> out there. Leave some comments on the YouTube Please. channel. Let us know what you think of this top five list. At number four for myself, this one's going to be very, very quick because he's not, you know, a star in the league. I just thought he would have been a little bit better. But it's Joel Farabee of the Philadelphia Flyers. A first round 14th overall pick back in 2018. He's done well in pretty much everywhere else he's played. He did well at the U.S. national team, the World Juniors for the U.S. He's won a few medals, gold and silver, Boston University. He's done well at every level of competition he's played at. And at this point, you know, four years into the league with the Philadelphia Flyers, I thought that he would have been a guy that the Flyers, the organization, and other teammates can look to to kind of depend on and can depend on for many more years in the future. But, you know, fantasy-wise, I'm looking at guys like Konechny, Scott Lawton, Morgan Frost, Owen Tippett, even Noah Cates now, over a guy like Joel Faraby, who I've mentioned as, Mm -hmm. you know, a late-round draft pick who has potential but just hasn't really lived up to it. Again, just averaging 33, 34 points a season. The more games he plays, it stays stagnant. So I just thought he would have been a little bit better, but uh, we'll see what holds up for his future next year with the Flyers. Yeah, and I thought he would have been better too, Steele, but I guess just, you know, the statistics, you know, that you're reaming off to me don't mean much fantasy NHL-wise. And he's just been a bit of a disappointment, I think, the last couple of years. So to me, I was almost expecting another one. But still, I guess it fits the mold of disappointments. I've been more looking at players like with expectations. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm making the point that I did with Matthews. And we're not getting back there. I know everyone's like, holy (laughs) crow, these guys are going to go back and forth. It's expectations. So Joel Faraby, for me, expectations were mid at best. So... I, I, I hear you, but he's just, he's not close to the top of my list, especially when you're looking at a guy who had nine shutouts and was right there in the mix for the Vesna. And this year, he's almost at a 3.0 goals against with one shutout in Jacob Markstrom. This is where it's disappointing for me. And honestly, Steele, when you said Kadri on this list, you and I, I think, could have built a top five of disappointing seasons. Honestly, with Calgary Flames players. Mackenzie yeah. Weger could have been on here. You know Huberto's at the top of, of both of our lists, and we'll get there. But you know what I'm saying? That's just kind of, for mm-hmm. me, that's what fits the disappointing mold. So maybe I'm hearing you on the Leaf side of things because they're about to go to the first round of the playoffs. Matthews is still going to touch 40. But I hope you also see my side of things. But yeah, Markstrom, one shutout. He has the, you know, 891 save 891 save percentage steal from a guy who's <laughs> no he's averaged over 913 his whole career this is just a huge disappointment for me straight up and down yeah there's a lot of calgary flames players that should be on this list but we had to be a little bit diverse with the players we choose from at number three i actually have a goalie as well and it's jordan bennington of the st louis blues and if you didn't think that he was done uh, before, after the season he just put up, he is officially done. Bennington yeah. had his 15 minutes of fame. He came into the league, overnight sensation, and th- I've never seen an overnight sen- sensation burn and crash this hard. The year he joined the league, he stole the show. He won the Stanley Cup. He finished the year with a 1.89 goals against average, a 9.27 save wow. percentage, practically wow. what Linus Allmark is doing right wow. now. And he's probably going to win the Vesna Trophy. He became Wait, an overnight did, sensation. And Bennington won the Cup? Whoa, don't get yeah. me off the rails. Like, because Linus I, Allmark. I don't want to hey, anyway, put that into the universe. But nonetheless, nonetheless, Jordan Bennington put up those incredible stats after coming in halfway through the season, taking the St. Louis Blues from dead last in the league to the Stanley Mm -hmm. Cup Finals, Mm -hmm. winning the Stanley Cup. And Mm -hmm. every single year since then, the goals against average has gone up and the save percentage has gone down. It gets worse and worse every single year where it currently resides at a 3.36 goals against average and an 892 save percentage. 
And to make matters worse, Bennington is actually fifth. He's fifth on the team. The St. Louis Blues in penalty minutes. 29 wow. penalty minutes on what the season. Number. What and a to number. Me, to me, the Blues made a horrible choice in trading away Billy Huso instead of Jordan Bennington. Mm, Obviously, good point. Uh, good point. salary cap, $6 million contract. You got to mm-hmm. deal with that. Mm-hmm. But, but the Blues possibly could have been a very different team if they had Huso instead of Bennington. But what can you do at this point? Nonetheless, I have first single-handedly been let down by Jordan Bennington this season, fantasy-wise. Never again am I drafting Jordan Bennington. He is a waste of a draft pick. Do not draft Mm. him. You just summarized that very nicely, my friend. And as much as because you got me all fired up about my Matthew situation, (laughs) I want to poke holes in all of your players, but I'm with you. And maybe it's like we saw this one coming a little bit because he's been coming unglued at the seams, you know, last yeah. postseasons, you know, shenanigans with the water bottle throwing and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's just disappointing. And he was probably, you know, those magazines we like to buy steel at the top of the season. He was still in that top 10 echelon of goalies yeah. or right amongst them. And I would say stay away with him with a 10 foot pole. We're going to get to, I got three guys left steel, two D men actually. And I think the obvious number one disappointment on the season. And we need to leave that one very short. So why don't you bring us back from break and I'll hit you with my three and two guy. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. The NBA playoffs are almost here and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's secure, and it is super easy to use. Flip and I use it every single day. Then you can bet on almost everything from the money line to point scores, even threes drain. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. You know I love doing the same game parlays. Only three, maybe four maximum. Don't want to hey. go any more than that. Hey. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free. We are available on your favorite podcast platform. So hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all the support every single day. Flip, take us away with your number mm. three most disappointing player this NHL season. And again, I think I explained the preamble to you at the start of the episode, which maybe we got a little bit away from when you and I got heated with that Matthews debate. By the way, the more that I think about it, the more that I love it. And I hope our listeners love it too. And hit us with those comments, though. We need to know, what do you guys think? We're here for y'all. So hit us with that feedback. DMs are open. Shout out to everyone always hitting us in the DMs. Aaron Ad for me, Steel, after what I saw from him last year. And I think this was a player a little bit that you and I talked about. And the injury caveats come into play here. So maybe this was a guy because injuries have happened. It's a little bit unfair to put him on this list, perhaps. But when I see him at his top, I expect so much from this player, Steele. And you and I are hockey guys. You've played. I've played. Not anything elite. But to me, Aaron Ekblad checks all the boxes. Fantasy or just on the ice. And last year, 15 goals, 42 assists. 57 points plus 38 and this year he's at minus 13 so just to start Mm -hmm. there and i know he went off the rails a little bit with injury but he got the real full run out here at the second half of the season and most of the year so for me 67 games and only 35 points when i expect him to be 45 plus and he proved it last year maybe this is one of those ones that could be off the list but when you finish uh sorry top five in the Norris last year, and then you come back at minus 13 and only 35 points, to me, that's really disappointing because I was expecting a lot more from Aaron Ekblad this year, and I believe you were too when you drafted him. Yeah, I I, I knew our top guys would be almost the same or the same. I also have Aaron Ekblad. He's the number two disappointing player player on my list as well. 
Uh, I almost had Victor Hedman up this on this list as well, but I decided not to because Victor Hedman to interject is that number two for me. So there you go. That's, we have a and cover. that's fair enough. So he was going to be on the list, but he's not yep. on the list. I ended up going with Aaron Ekblad, and honestly, his all around game this year has been pretty atrocious. Thirty five mm-hmm. points on the year, which is twenty two points less than last year. Like you said, minus thirteen which is the second worst in his career as well. Ouch. Uh, you, you look at the peripheral stats. The peripheral stats are actually up. He's shooting more. He's blocking yep. more. He's hitting more. But yes. unless you actually execute the major categories where you collect all your fantasy points, the peripheral stats don't really matter. That's why a lot of those guys are on the waiver wire tar- are on the waiver wire because, yeah, the peripheral stats mm-hmm. are good, but they don't get any goals. They don't get any assists, and they get no power play time. And mm-hmm. Ekblad just – he's had the opportunity, but – he just hasn't lived up to those expectations. And like you said, I took Ekblad yes, way too early. I didn't agree with you then, but I do agree with you now. I took him too early in our fantasy draft. He was a huge disappointment all season long. And um, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for Brandon Montour and Matthew Kachuk leading the Ooh. way, it, I don't even think yeah. the Panthers would be close to a playoff spot right now because the Panthers have been disappointing. So if Kachuk didn't, doesn't yeah. go off for another 100-point yeah. season and Montour doesn't fill in the shoes for or fill in the skates for, for Ekblad, then it's going to be a disappointing season for the Panthers who are still battling for that second wildcard spot. And the fact that they've had to rely on Alex Leon or Leon or Lyon, whatever you call this kid. And he has been playing well, but the yeah, fact that has. you have to basically rely on a third stringer steal to get in there. Mm-hmm. What do the Boston Bruins do with these Florida Panthers if they cruise into them at the first round? It's going to be a quick dismantling. I'm going to say four. You and I are going to get to these predictions, and I'm so <laughs> excited. We're going to go series by series like we did last year. Steel and I are going to have our predictions. Who wins? How many games? games x factors under the radar players it's all coming up so make sure you keep it tapped but seriously if it is the panthers that squeak in there steel because i'm with you i'd actually rather see sid you mentioned ovechkin yeah. out sid out that would be sad anyway florida panthers i'm with you all of those takes very quickly former florida panther and i said i had headman at two and the reason why i had headman at two is because he has half as many points as he did last year. Yeah. He also is only at plus 12. That's half as good as last year. Penalty minutes are down. And what's honestly most indicative of me seeing him have a bad year, and I know that's not a fantasy number directly, takeaway giveaways. Last year, he was even. This year, he's giving the puck away at almost a two-to-one rate steal. Wow. That means a defenseman is not playing his game. That's just, that's it. So he was at number two to me, but he, I know he still brings the value in a lot of leagues. Mm-hmm. Like maybe he wasn't as big of a disappointment. So I understand why he didn't make your list. And let's wrap this show up with by far. Yes. The biggest disappointment of the year in Jonathan Huberto. Take it away, my friend. Well, I, I've got all my notes listed out here. It's got so to be, right? To, it's got to be. There's a lot to talk about, but. He hasn't had a season this bad since 2013, which was the second year in the NHL. 54 points in 76 games compared to 115 points last year. That's a 61-point difference. I know there's still three games left in the Calgary season, but it doesn't matter. A 61-point difference is is just unacceptable, in my opinion. When you're supposed to be a superstar Mm. player in the league, you should be able to play with everyone. Now, I do want to take a second and look at it from his perspective and the other side, I understand it was a tough break. You just had the season of your life, 115 points. You make the playoffs, you get dominated. You then get traded overnight to a new conference, a new country, a new environment, both with the team and weather-wise. Like, who wants to go from Florida to Calgary, Mm. which is just Mm. awful in itself? Nobody wants to do that. But even with all that being said, you can't go out there and put up a performance like this for the entire season. 61 point difference no. is unacceptable. No. And again, yeah. I do want to emphasize it's not all his fault. He's playing three minutes less on average this year than he was last year. The coaching decisions, mm-hmm. again, mm-hmm. he's been up and down the lineup. You do not have Huberto ever on the fourth or third line, but he has been at some points no. this year. But again, I want yeah. to say this. Great players should be able to play with anyone and still produce. Because you look at Matthew Kachuk, 
He's in a new environment as well. He put up his second hundred point season. New again. country, even you even all the same thing. Even Johnny Goudreau, he might not be close to 150 mm. points that he had last no, year. No, I hear you. But he still I has 71 you. points in 75 games. That's yeah, still great. Yeah, so I me, hear you. I to yep. me, uh, great players need to be able to play with anybody, and it just doesn't seem like Huberto fits in really well with Calgary right now. And I would say this deal. You mentioned the how he was run out on the fourth line, and maybe that might not have all to do with you know his fault. But you also said the same thing that should go hand in hand with a comment like that is if you're scoring 115 points, also hold on, 92 points in a year, 78 points in a year, and then a mm-hmm. bang out 115. You better be bringing the heat, you know. Yeah. Like, I don't care what the coach is doing, do something productive. And this guy almost has looked defeated. I, like, and I, let me know what you think about this. But I know he's a quiet player, but his and I, the Calgary media is not exactly ruthless, and he's just looked defeated in some of these, uh, you know, post game comments, mid game yeah. comments when he's been interviewed. It doesn't smell right with this situation with Huberto. And honestly, Steele, if next season doesn't go to plan for the first half, I see Huberto on the move. It could be Huberto to me. It could be Huberto. It could be Mackenzie Weger because I've I've known there's been some circulation mm. with Weger's name as well. And that's the scary thing because they both just signed massive contracts, extensions with the and Calgary that plan. look good. I think we both like those deals, dude. With uh, with tre- uh, tree living <laughs> with tree living, yeah, um, yeah. What he was able to accomplish with that trade, yeah, getting Mackenzie Weger and Jonathan Huberto. For yes. Matthew Kachuk, he knew that was going to happen. So it was an absolute great trade. Again, I said this the other day in our mm. last episode. On paper, mm-hmm. the Calgary Flames are a playoff team. Yes. It just hasn't yes. panned out. There's just the chemistry is not the same like it was back in Florida for Huberto and, and, and uh, Mackenzie Weger. So again, I could see either one of them, not both, but either one of them being moved if things don't pan out next year. And let me just maybe wrap it up with this. And I don't think you and I have ever discussed this, but shout out to Bill Zito, you know, the GM and operations manager for the Florida Panthers straight up. Like maybe he was on to something, getting rid of Huberdo, hot <laughs> sell high. You and I like to, I know, you know, it's like, it's easy to say now, but they knew something was up yeah. there in the sell high situation. I know it's uh, <laughs> Back, you know, vision is 2020. Rear view vision is 2020. But anyway, this is just one of those situations that you and I, as fantasy and hockey heads, we had to talk about coming on to today's episode as disappointments. And I think, and I hope our listeners agree, watchers agree, this has been one of my favorite episodes with you and I, pal. And by the way, coming up on our second year anniversary of the playoffs almost yes started off very strong but came back together as a whole at the end of the episode but hey! look we knew jonathan huberto everyone has jonathan huberto at oh the number yeah one I, position. I didn't even have the tab up that's no. number one <laughs> he's just oh he's just automatically in that number one he's spot. on there Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure your second listen is game to game. Every moment, every performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only Locked On hosts can deliver. Thank you again so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. No bets. Maybe check out the Masters that is happening over this weekend as well. Maybe play some bets on wink wink jordan speed he's never lost on easter weekend over the last three years that's good luck enjoy your weekend and we shall see you back here again on monday peace out matthews disappointment